keep your mask on if you're going to sing with us, okay? Stay seated the rest of the time. I think it uses more energy to stand than it does to sit. It's going to be cooler sitting down. So, uh, yeah, that doesn't. Uh, Y'all won't be able to read this. That's okay. Johnny, just bypass it and go on to a, a black screen, and I'll read the scripture to them. Oh, can you see it? Yeah. Kind of sort of. It's bigger than your screen. Bigger than my screen? Okay. That's the story of my life. <laughs> A well, reading this morning from the God from from uh, the Old Testament from Joshua. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and some of the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, "Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel: Long ago, your ancestors Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor." Live beyond the Euphrates and serve other gods. Now therefore revere the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you're unwilling to serve the Lord, those this day whom you will choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it's the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery and who did these great signs in our sight. He protected us all along the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore we also will serve the Lord, for He is our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you, God. Now this morning we'll affirm our faith with the modern affirmation. You can just stay seated. We believe in God the Father. 
infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. together. Let's sing every time I feel the Spirit. Gracious God, we come to this place to have peace and serenity and get closer to You. But we come out of a world that's full of all kinds of turmoil. We pray today for people in Haiti as they struggle with their homes and surviving. It's even hard to imagine because of the circumstances they had before the earthquake weren't that good. We pray for people in Afghanistan. We pray for people all around the world that are undergoing political change and all kinds of stressors. And sometimes that's all we can do is pray. We pray for those around our community that are sick. Those that are dealing with dreaded diseases and going through treatments and having side effects. God, we pray for healing. And yes, sometimes that is physical. And many times 
it begins with spiritual healing. We confess that we we need that kind of healing. We struggle. Oh, not with just no air conditioning. We just struggle with relationships that are shattered with words said that hurt. So we don't know where to turn except to turn to You. So today we pray for change, for people to be, become more aware of Your Spirit, to the Christian community to be more unified and less fractured, for the power and the glory and the words of our Lord and Savior to actually have an impact on our hearts first and on the hearts and lives of others. We think about Jesus, His coming, His death, His resurrection. And when we pray, we think about the way He taught us to pray when He said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So I know this is going to make you really happy, Ann. But we're only going to sing two verses of this next song. So we'll make it the first and the last. Okay? Two verses to begin with. No, there's four. Yep. I'm looking at four right here in your head. I might be wrong. <laughs> no, you're never wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're going to sing this song. It's called Sarah and I was over long. We've sung it before. It's an easy tune. Uh, just bear with us and we'll get here. friends that our air conditioner had failed. He said, must be time for a hellfire and brimstone sermon. <laughs> Don't leave. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> our gospel reading this morning comes from the gospel of John in the sixth verse. And I would normally ask you to stand, but you do not need to this morning. This stay seated where it's somewhat cooler. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. 
This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray Him. And He said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to Me unless it's granted by the Father. Because of this, many of His disciples turned back and no longer went about with Him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks God. So I titled this message, Eternal Life. You know, we uh, I think sometimes we take that for granted. I came up to the church one time, said, I believe in God, I get to go to heaven. I wish it was that easy. There's just more to the story. We got work to do. And somehow we get confused with what I would call uh, denominational doctrine teaching and the scriptures. You know, the Roman Catholics got rules and the Methodists got rules and the Baptists got rules and everybody's got rules. The Bible says love one another. The Bible says do unto others as you have to do unto you. All of those other people are trying to get you to do that, but they want you to do it on one foot or the other. It's almost like calling in the customer service somewhere, you know. Yeah. Am I doing it the right way for the Methodists? Or the Baptists? So during the last week on Tuesday, we rode the train. It goes from Durango, Colorado to Silverton, Colorado. It's only 45 miles. It takes three and a half hours because the train goes 20 miles an hour. We had a long train. had 15 cars on it. For an air gauge railroad, that's a lot because the curves are there. So they, we had to have two engines to take us up the mountain. So there was two smokestacks up in front of him. And uh, so I'm sitting next to this guy, and we, we, we were in a parlor car, so we had tables and uh, a, 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 a host. <laughs> she was in there selling drinks and giving us, we got free soda water and water and snacks. Anyway, so the guy sitting over here to my right, he's a retired Navy guy, he's big, really tall, about six, six and a half feet or so. He's uh, had a, a knee replacement. He doesn't do well standing up on a train that's doing this for the whole time. So we got to talking. And he said, I just love this train thing because we can talk to people. It's not like being on an airplane where you just don't talk to people. I said, yeah, I don't really like being on an airplane and talking to people because once they find out what I do, they want to talk about what I do. <laughs> So I usually just keep my mouth shut, sit by the window and turn and look out the window. By the way, what do you do? That's why I'm a preacher. What kind? I said, well, not a very good one. No, 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 no. What brand? Methodist. Now his wife chimes in. I grew up Methodist. That I knew this was fixed to go downhill somewhere. But I'm now Church of Christ. Ed over here, he think might watch this someday, so I have to be kind of nice. Ed over here says, uh, I'm Roman Catholic. 
we've been married 42 years. Every Saturday night, I go to Mass. She goes with me. Every Sunday morning, we go to the Church of Christ. I go with her. Because we respect each other in our beliefs. Now really, that's what I got out of the whole thing. Although the discussion went on for many days longer. But really, isn't, isn't, there, isn't there something that we could do? Isn't it sort of like loving one another to have respect for other people's faith instead of trying to get theirs to be like mine? And, and, and so if we can start to have respect for other people's faith, then maybe we can get together because they might respect ours, and then we can accomplish some good to change the world. Because I don't know about y'all, the world needs to be changed. There is a fire extinguisher up here if it gets too fiery. I, but I'm, I, you know, so one of the things that happened, we did we did so many things in a few days. If y'all don't know, we left here, went to, uh, through New Mexico to Colorado, went from Colorado to uh, Utah and Arizona and then down the Grand Canyon and then came back. We drove through a lot of different places. We observed a lot of different things. We went through, I don't know how many Native American reservations. The one that we went through where we saw the dust storm within the rainstorm that had hail in it all at the same time. That was an Indian reservation. They didn't have any grass anywhere. They don't sell lawnmowers in that reservation. And Kathy and I were just talking to back and forth to ourselves. Well, we didn't do that group of Indians any favor when we gave them that land. Because they can't do anything. With it. It's not much different in New Mexico and the other places either. They don't have... They didn't get bountiful places. But there was a different kind of respect that I've been seeing more so up there than I've been seeing here. So, that means, you know, Michael Slaughter, one of my mentor preachers, says, if you need change, preach change, and when you get through preaching change, keep preaching change. we got to change the world, and we got to do it with Jesus Christ. And somebody's got to take responsibility to do it. If we keep waiting for the other guy to do it, they're not going to, oh, well, you know, it'll be the Baptists. They're good at evangelism. Well, they may not be able to handle it all. Evangelism is not us carrying a Bible and banging on somebody's door and saying, well, you kneel and say the sinner's prayer. Evangelism is living the kind of life that people see God in it and want to be closer to God because they saw who you were and what you did. And we have a lot of people like that in our church. We have a lot of people that do just amazing things in our community and around in different places. You know, we ought to probably have a whole session about that someday to see the things that people do. Because I don't think y'all know. We got people that work for the, the Texas Department of Human Services. I think I probably got that right. We got, we got people that, that, that work in, in, for the FBI. Well, or something like that. <laughs> but we got people that do all kind of different stuff. We got people who have been in this community for years, and when you run across somebody that knows them, they're going to tell you, oh, that person is phenomenal. They were phenomenal in high school, and they still are. We've got anchors in this community, not just in Golden Acres, but in the Southeast Harris County, where we can start to impact other people. And we need to spend less time worried about, oh, well, will they come to church? No, I don't care if they come here. I'd love for them to. Just talk to them about their relationship with God and tell them yours got better when you went to church, if it did. And maybe they'll come here or maybe they'll go somewhere, but going somewhere is better than nowhere. We're not in competition with the Baptist church down the street or the Catholic church on the corner, we're in, the, in unity with them in the spirit to bring Jesus Christ into the world because of what Jesus says to us through the Gospel of John and the Scripture today. His words are the word of life. 
His words are the words of the Spirit. His words are the ones that give us eternal life. Amen? Amen. Not the words of the guy on channel 2 or 11 or 7. Not even mine. But these words give me eternal life. And you know, we need to spend more time in these words and less time in the other stuff. And I wish I could tell you, well, just tune in to Christian TV and radio. Well, no, they go the same place. We don't need to be a part of any particular movement if we're a part of God's movement because that's the only movement that ultimately counts. I appreciated this couple because I've known so many couples that when they don't go to the same brand church, they just don't go at all. I appreciate getting to know them and to understand a little bit about their life and their troubles. And they had some troubles. Like many of us, you know, they had a family member that wasn't speaking to them at the moment. Uh, you know, little things. Just, they're, they're normal people, but they were out here living out their life and their faith, and they weren't afraid to share it with the guy sitting across the aisle with them. I'm always impressed by that. Especially when it happens and they aren't talking to me because they found out I'm a preacher. They decided that I probably wasn't going to hell no other than so uh, and, and, and it was it was a good discussion. And one mostly we talked about the other stuff. But it was interesting because we had to hear I mean and I'm not kidding you, when we go places, y'all do the same thing. I go out to eat with some of you guys, you say to the server, Oh, this is our preacher. Just tell him I'm the janitor. <laughs> really? I can be a spiritual janitor. I probably look more like the janitor than the preacher. So, you know, just leave it alone. This passage of Scripture, though, has some interesting words in it. And I think without paying attention to it, we might miss it. I've often wondered what happened to it. You know, on the Sundays when we do communion, and... Uh, in the United Methodist Church, we absolutely know that the bread continues to be bread all the way through communion and that the grape juice or wine continues to be grape juice or wine all the way through. We know that. But if you listen to the words we say, this is my the body of Christ, this is the blood of Christ, right? Can you imagine the look on a first time going to church, never been to church in their life? They walk in and they hear this scripture where Jesus says, if you don't eat me, You say, what kind of people are these? And I think that's what was going on here with these other people. Because he, what he was saying, you don't get it. Flesh is not important. What I'm talking about is, are you eating the spiritual words that I give you? Are you filling yourself with the spiritual words that I give you? That's the one that leads you to eternity. Flesh is not important. But it is astounding to know this was Jesus. You know, our Jesus. Because of this, many disciples turned back and no longer went about with Him. Can't you see Jesus looking up at the twelve and said, you want to go too? And of course, it's always Peter. It's impetuous Peter. Oh no, 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 no. You're the one. Jesus had every right in the world to get angry and mad at different times. Even at Peter, he could have been furious. Peter betrayed him three times. Everybody was going to betray him. He did not go out into the world with bitterness and anger, even when the Pharisees and the Sadducees were about to kill him. He modeled for us how we're supposed to respond to the world if we want to have the kind of impact on the world he had. We don't do it with bitterness and hostility, we do it with love, mercy, and grace, and sometimes just physical presence instead of any words at all. I 
don't know how many of y'all have ever said, thought, I wish we could have the good old days back. And I always laugh about that because the good old days I lived in, it was hotter than it is in here now in church. We were, couldn't wait for a fan to come around and aim at us. We were all wearing suits, so that was worse. As we drove down Road 66, uh, if you haven't seen the pictures, I stood on the corner of Winslow, Arizona. <laughs> and I did see a girl in a flatbed Ford pickup. <laughs> And I also saw the Wigwam Motel, which I stayed in as a kid many, 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 many years ago. And it's fun to reflect on all that stuff. And that whole Winslow, <laughs> Winslow, Arizona thing's making somebody a ton of money selling me a Route 66 shirt. <laughs> but it's not the same. Route 66 mostly now is on Interstate 40. And if you want to see the old one, you've got to take Business 40 through the little towns and there's not much there. Can't go back. Can't go back the way it was. We just can't go back to the church of the 50s or the 60s or the 70s or even the churches of 2018 because church is going to be different now. The gospel is going to be the gospel. But this to me is so much more like the mission field that Jesus sent us into originally. Remember when He sent people out two by two and He said, don't take anything, just don't, just go. Out into the mission field and, and make disciples. Now I think that's where we are now. The world is in need of discipling. And the unfortunate thing about discipling is that you can't make disciples if you're not a disciple. So we need to spend some concerted effort to be better at our own discipling so that then we can lead other people into the opportunity to have a relationship with the Jesus Christ that promises them in the words in this Scripture, eternity. That's the one I want. How about you? I'm not always good at it, friends, but I want to be better at it. I want to be the one that somehow or another, somebody somewhere says, you know, it was that guy, the way he treated that clerk, or the way he treated that server, or the way he treated that little boy in the park, that guy made me think about my own need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. But you're that guy too. And so God calls us into this duty, if you will, to offer Christ. And sometimes we use words. Sometimes we're just nice. We call people by name when we know it. If we don't, we see a name tag, we call them by name anyway. We respond to people like they're human persons. Human beings, not things in the way. We were standing on the corner in Winslow, Arizona. And a young man came up to me. His name was Kevin. Johnny. And he says, uh, would you take my picture? In his wife or girlfriend, whatever she was. I said, yes, would you rather me use your phone so you'll have the picture? That was supposed to be funny. <laughs> he laughed. So I took his picture, he took our picture, we hung around for a little while, he was from New York. This is when I'm trying to practice a little bit of what I preach to y'all. I could have just said, thanks buddy, and moved on, but I didn't, I said, what's your name? My name's Jack, his name's Kevin, I have no last name. Where are you from? I'm from New York, we're from Texas. It was just more fun. Because he was a real person standing there in a real place at the same time we were doing real stuff. And we have that in common. And you know what? We'll always have had that in common for that moment. I think we should cherish those moments. Every moment. Every day. Sometimes the doctors call and give us results we didn't want. 
We don't want to hear them, but we got to. Sometimes the world makes decisions and goes into places we're not happy about it. We don't want to hear it, but we got to. See, the problem is God gave us free will. Within this book are all the things necessary for our salvation. And we need to hear it. But God's not going to make us. He's not interested in forcing us. It's your own free will. And what I believe is when you make that turn, you or someone else, anyone that we know, makes a turn from being away from the fold, away from the Spirit, or never attached to it, and they make that one-time connection where they move, and they move back into the line of fire of the Holy Spirit. I think when that happens, there's a celebration in heaven, and I want to be a part of that too. So, <laughs> So, we do have a choice, free will. The more time we spend in the Spirit, the clearer things are going to be to us. We won't be floundering in the ocean like a jellyfish. We'll have direction. When bad things happen, we'll know these are bad things, but we're going to get through them. When we do things that are off track, we can confess it. And we can get back on track. Because it's never too late. Not for us or for anybody else to be accepted. It said one place in this scripture, I'm not going to open it up as the wind's blowing, but it said in there, you can't come to me unless the Father has told you. Told you. Remember that when I read that? Jesus came Emmanuel to be God with us. That's everything. The Father has called. It's not a matter of God's calling us. It's a matter of our awareness of God's call. So today I just want to like tune the frequency in a little bit better for you. God is calling you to be God's people Adopted, chosen, selected into God's kingdom so that we can live out those words we say every week in the Lord's Prayer. <coughs> thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. That's our call. What's our answer? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So today as we close our service, we're going to sing an Easter song. We're going to sing Christ the Lord is risen today. We're only going to sing four verses. I think there are more than that. One, two, three, and four is all we're going to sing. Again, you can remain seated. I'm absolutely sure it's cooler because I feel cooler when you're seated. <laughs> And I was in front of my fan I was tripped over a while ago and I messed it up, now it's going back on. <laughs> I'm ready, but you are here. Christ the Lord is risen today.
Friends, it's been fun today. I hope it'll, really, it's not too bad in here where I'm at. We're, we're surviving okay. I'm hoping we have air conditioning next week so we can meet our jackets, sweaters, and all that stuff again. Uh, I hear about that too. So uh, I want to tell you, we don't pass an offering plate right now because of the COVID stuff. There is a basket in the back. We gladly accept your gifts, finds, and offerings there. And uh, let me just bless you this way as you're seated, and then you can go from this place. You know, my friends, it is the power of God that created everything we can see, and it's Jesus who came to instruct us, show us, and be an example. But it's the Holy Spirit that gets us through. Jesus' words and the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, will lead us to eternity. And I'm hoping that I get to be there to see the joy for so many others that I know are already there. Go in peace. Amen.